Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber. Morning, everyone, and welcome to the scoreboard. Well, imagine what happens when you pick your best players. Having Prithvi Shaw on the bench is a bit like heading to your friend's water pistol extravaganza, but leaving your Nerf Super Soaker Hydra at home. Last year, three years, he has the second quickest power play strike rate. So fancy dropping him so you can use Mitch Marsh as an opener. Mitch Marsh is not an opener anyway. The whole thing is madness, which is exactly what Warner and Prithvi create at the top when you allow them to do it. By the way, Warner is third on the strike weight list in the power play. Of course, Delhi. Sorry. <laughs> All exploded on me. Of course, Delhi is still. Um, uh, is was still worked over by CSK, which is completely unfair. Patharana bolt, two of the best balls you could see. And again, it looked like Delhi would come up short. But Rishabh Pant, who had been batting like someone who had come back from a major injury, suddenly just swung through the line a little bit and started to trust himself. And that got them back to a decent score. But it was really Khalil Ahmed who put them away in front when CSK managed to put a little bit of pressure back on until Mukesh Kumar, who finally got some Vizag vengeance with two and two. And eventually Dhoni came in and he stole the strike from Jadeja which seems like a plot point going forward. Am I wrong? But Delhi won. Without their best bowler, hell of a turnaround for a team who looked like they were settling into last place. Also, the crowd cheering Dhoni last ball six in a massive loss is the story of modern sport. Uh, what about the Sunrises? They tried to score quick with the handbrake on. I haven't seen this many bad starts since the last time I was in Silicon Valley. But as usual, I would ignore all of this to talk about the fact that Mo Chama is great. Also thought um, Nura Ahmed looked fire as well. Probably a near perfect situation uh, for Sai Sadarshan to play in. Small total, quick start. That man can anchor the shit out of a chase. Especially knowing that the original Heinrich class and David Miller was at the other end. Boovy at least showed some form. Cummins continued to bowl well. Sadly, everyone else got hammered. Um, uh, and they lost the game. But, you know, you take what you can from this life. All right, well, let's get on to, to the scoreboard part of the show. Remember to like, subscribe, do all the fancy things. But mostly, if you want to ask a question, go in the comments. And if you're desperate to ask a question, that's what the Super Chat is for. Actually, I'm not actually sure what the Super Chat is for. It's probably to make Google rich, but uh, we'll start here. Uh, Khalil Ahmed's economy rate in the power play by opponent in the OPL. I like this. So obviously Punjab, uh, he, he went at runs. Since then, he's gone at three runs and over in both games so far. So none for 28 and two, one for nine and three, and two for nine and three. So he has five wickets overall, and three of them are in the power play. It's, it's good, I think is the word that I'm searching for then. Uh, we have, uh, uh, Varun has um, uh, joined us, and he's doing some stats. Actually, he's probably in the chat right now. Um, but he can out himself in the chat if he wants to. But we've been looking at uh, true true wickets per um, uh, for players as well. So true wickets basically means for the balls that you bowl, how likely are other ball bowlers going to get wickets compared to how likely you get wickets. So let us just have a little bit of a look here. So we've got 2020. Um, he had a, a normal true economy there with um, a true wickets um, of slight plus. So we've got here... Um, where he is, and then, I don't know if this is, is this 2018 down here? Um, where it looks like he got absolutely hammered. He's off the graph. He's, he got smashed out of the graph. Anyway, you, you can see, um, you can see all these different years, and this year, uh, he's right up, up there as well. So he, at the moment, he's getting, you know, a quarter more wickets than you would expect uh, when he's been bowling. And you can see, um, he has had an even better year than that back in 2022. Anything in this region, really, it doesn't have to be this great, um, would be absolutely fantastic, I think, for him. Oh, 
from now my uh i'm just gonna have a quick break because apparently all my equipment wants to break today but i'll be back in a one moment after just a very very quick break occasionally i also talk about behind the scenes stuff a huge thanks to everyone who has supported us on patreon and helped us build this channel Join our Patreon community and unlock exclusive benefits. Enjoy AMAs, live calls with me, and connect with fellow cricket enthusiasts on Discord. Express your cricket fandom with body line. Don't express your cricket fandom. Come back to the scoreboard. Um, express your cricket fandom later. Uh, this is his average swing in the power play today. So I think this came up around the fourth or fifth over. Uh, it was shown on the broadcast. And you can see here that CSK fast bowlers didn't really get any swing. And then under lights, it swung a lot more. That could just be conditions. It could be the ball. It could be the wrists, whatever. But, you know, Deepak Chahar was bowling here. So you would expect some swing at that. So that's a that's a pretty big difference. And especially once Delhi got that total, kind of reminded us of some of those games we saw in the World Cup, right, where one team would go on to make, you know, a decent total or plus total in this case. And then, the ball, then they come out with the ball and it does a little bit more. And suddenly the game's kind of over, even if CSK fought themselves back a little bit. And we just wanted to look at Ratcha Revenge's strike rate in the first 10 balls by opponent in the IPL so far. So against the RCB, he was at 280. He was at two runs a ball against the Titans, and he was down at 22 uh, here in this game. I just thought for myself that he got a little bit sloggy. It looked today like a player who hadn't played a lot of top-level T20 cricket. And... That's going to happen occasionally. He will get experienced. He's still quite young and he hasn't batted at the top of the order against this level of bowling all that often. But it felt like instead of defaulting to, I'm going to play my best shot and hit some boundaries here, it felt like he was, I'm just going to swing as hard as I can. And, you know, there was a couple of plays and misses that I remember in there as well that were not ideal. Uh, well, this is... Uh, oh, the scene bowlers versus Shivam Dubé, of course. Um you can see how short they have gone to him. Part of this is the double bouncer um, situation, but 82% of the balls have been bowled short to him so far. I think he did okay in that first game, but if you go back to the scoreboard, which I think we did a scoreboard on that, that day and we talked about it, I just thought he cloughed a lot of balls that weren't caught. Clearly the teams are deciding that this is a very, very good option against him. I still think it's quite high risk, but it'd be interesting to see just how much... Uh, bowling short we will see and teams don't really want to put the ball in his area as well none of this is particularly new it's just that with a player like him there's nowhere to hide in, in the way there is it's one reason i really like the double bouncer rule um you know getting getting away with one in and over is easy but getting peppered a couple of times or, and then having another ball at your chest is a lot tougher and then we've got just the run rates of of the game today you could see that with the wickets just how far Chennai fell behind. And if there's any issue with Chennai, it is their inability to break chases. Peak Emma Stoney, I don't think that matters as much. But this is probably why you want someone like Ratchet Ravindra to come off here or Ajinkya Rahane to come off in this area, right? And instead, they just never got back. But if you look at just what how Delhi started... You know, I mean, that run rate, what's that? From the sixth over to and pretty much to the wicket in the 10th over, they're going at tens, right? And Chen, I could just never put any pressure back on them. They started slow um, and stayed behind all the way through. All right, let's have a look at the first innings. Uh, this is Warner's T20 form after the um, ODI World Cup. So this is the Big Bash and the ILT20. Is it IL20? IL20. ILT20. I don't know, the, the one in the UAE. Um, this is the four uh, T20Is against the West Indies and New Zealand. And this is his form in the IPL so far. One thing I would say, if you look at Warner over the last, what, four or five years, maybe? Just how often, as he, as he has been on a gradual decline, you see these sorts of things happen more often to him where he goes through fads but he does usually pick it back up and he's either doesn't score in clumps or does score in clumps. Uh, whereas obviously he, you know, at his best, he was just a lot more consistent. So you will occasionally see a tournament that he will turn up in where he won't make any runs. And we've seen, we've seen that happen in the IPL. We saw that happen in the CPL one year, you know, all these different leagues. Um, wasn't he, he was player of the tournament in one T20 World Cup. 
and then afterwards uh he had um i don't think he made any runs when he went back to australia Prisfield Shaw's average in the power play by season. So you could see here he averaged 27 in 2018, and then he had a couple of lower years, and then those two that were much stronger. And then last year, there was that real regression where he struggled a little bit. I think he is, again, probably never going to be a fully... What's the best way of putting it? Um... He's never going to be a, a great, dependable opening batter. You don't need that if you have Warner, especially if Warner's having a good season. What you really want is that sort of mixture of both of them together because their ability to score at a strike rate of 145, 150 in the power play is really what gives them um, the impact. And so knowing that Warner has averaged so high in so many IPL seasons, I think does he have the highest batting average in the IPL I mean, Kale Roll might have gone past him now, but I remember at one stage Warner was, he's right up there anyway. So having someone like Prisby Shaw is, is a big deal. But again, you could see here that he's really struggled at, um, you know, in, sorry, I said power play four. This is his entire season. You could see, you know, I would say 27 is about where you want him to average overall. So he's had three below that and two above that. You're never going to get an average of 35 or 40 out of him, but, Obviously, last year was not ideal. It wouldn't have been enough for me not to start him this year, um, only because you can already see with this pattern, it's kind of the way he plays. And if you're going to have someone who's going to attack that much, there should be more flexibility in their numbers. Um, he's not a David Warner type player. Uh, and this is uh, Prisby Shaw's true average at strike rate in the IPL by season. So you could see we've got a year down here where his true strike rate, he was 10 under. So what's that? 2023. So he doesn't make any runs and really, really struggles. So massively behind on runs in that year. He's 20, He's making 23 runs less than what another opener would have made, right? And then you take a year like this where he averages about the same as a normal opener, but his true strike rate is 40 higher than other, other people. And that was 2021. They take any kind of of these years, I think, off him because you can see here, this is, where are we? This is um, strike rate neutral, all right? So he's 11 up on his strike rate here on true strike rate, 20 up on his strike rate here, 27 and 31. If you could get him plus 25 on his strike rate, you can then allow for the fact that you know that if this is true average neutral, this area in here of average 10 or 15 less, you would take because of the boost he gives you. Right? That's essentially what you want with, with Prithvi Shaw. And I understand why he wasn't in the side. He would be in my side and I was pretty shocked and I don't think I was the only one. Well, I've just seen here, Delhi Daredevils and Delhi Capitals. Hey, those, those were the days. He's probably more of a Daredevil than a Capital. We're thinking about that. Uh, let's just have a look at him and Warner together. So I was looking this up today because I know, I can't remember when I when I first found this, but Prissy Shaw has one of the highest boundary percentage rates, uh, or sorry, four four boundaries percentage rates um, of any player in, in the in um, in the world, I think, but certainly in the IPL. I think I'm right in saying both of those. So you can see balls per four. Uh, Warner hits a, uh, a four every 5.37 balls, but Prissy Shaw hits one every 4.82 balls. And I think, I'm trying to remember, I think he's 56% or 55% of his runs are boundary fours in the power play. Whereas Warner um, hits a six every 23.6 balls, and you see Prissy Shaw is up here at every 23 balls. So they both play weirdly quite similar. And I think Jaiswal has a higher strike rate than both of them in the power play of people with over 500 runs in the last three or four years. But Warner and Percy Shaw are just behind him. But all three of those guys hit fours, not sixes. And it's something I'd never noticed before. And I might have to look out for other leagues as well to see if these things go uh, further forward. Um, but yeah, it's it's really fascinating the, the fact they both score very, very quickly and they bat in a very different way. But the one method that they share is the fact that they are looking to hit boundaries, you know, I was going to say along the ground, but they're looking to hit four boundaries rather than six boundaries. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's not the most natural thing because quite often once you're attacking, 
you're trying to go all the way through. And I think it's one reason why certainly Warren has had a lot of success, maybe why Jai Swell will, and also why Chris Fischel has hit so many boundaries is because a lot of players are trying to hit the ball very, very hard. And these guys are just trying to hit it to the gap, right? Or they're trying to chip it over the top rather than trying to hit everything for four and six. So it's an interesting one. Um, and it just happened to be that both of them are, are very, very similar on those marks, like eerily similar. Like it's actually creeping me out how much these two look alike. Uh, Richard Punt today, first 23 balls, uh, looked like someone, as I said before, he'd been in an accident, wasn't sure of himself, and then scored at three runs a ball after that. I thought it was more him trying to anchor the innings. I, I talked to some other people who thought maybe he just is struggling a little bit at, at the moment, still coming back from the injury. Could be a combination of both. When he started to hit out at the end, it did make me feel a little bit like he had just been playing within himself. Ever, anyone who's ever been to this channel will know that Richard Punt should never play within himself. It's not his game. We can find other people to play within themselves. The people who can touch the levels that he can touch, that's what he should be trying to do. An average of 28 with a strike rate of 155 is exactly what I want from my Richard Punt. Uh, and this is just the CSK bowlers. So you can see <laughs> Dash Panda going out run a ball is just, this is my world. Um, uh, brilliant work, work from him. Uh, the, the three, you would almost say that the three bowls you would trust the most in this lineup have all got hit. And the two bowls you would trust the least, certainly with economies, um, have gone, uh, absolutely brilliantly, but all done to well done to him after he got hit in that first game i actually thought they might move on from him um uh, you know sort of give him a chance early season and if it doesn't work try something different but they haven't the patharana um that double strike was absolutely exceptional and so i think he bowled three balls at 135 k's and then a ball at 150 and it was just it was too fast it was too much right absolutely brilliant delivery um enjoyed every single moment of it glad i didn't have to face it and then he did it again he it, someone asked yesterday and that's what i was sort of talking about with him is his ceiling is so ridiculously high i still think a bowler like that your their floor can be incredibly low but when he gets it right good luck all right let's move on to the other game uh this is uh rashid khan versus uh heinrich Klassen. you can see here uh just uh getting the ball a little bit shorter and i think when you're bowling to i think this is probably where rashid khan bowls to most batters this length but the problem with doing that against heinrich Klassen is this back foot what do we call it it's not a pull shot is it it's not drive it's like a tennis slap um that he plays it's just an incredible hit who else plays it maybe butler has a little bit of it as well so i actually think getting that little bit fuller um, is a is a big deal. So for most batters in the world, Rashid Khan's got the ideal length here. But I do think when he's bowling to Henrik Klaassen, that little bit fuller, and I I think it's worth looking at for a few other players. Obviously, the problem is if you slight if you get into this area here, he'll just come on the front foot and smash you, and that's why he is so effective against spin. Uh, these are the quickest scoring batters versus Rashid Khan in the IPL. This is runs per over. Uh, good bars. Come on down, seventy runs per over. Um, that's just Afghanistan on Afghanistan crime there. Menemvora, uh, 15 runs per over. And Abhishek Sharma comes in here in the middle. So I, I thought that was, was quite interesting. He certainly went for him today. Um, there's, we've got the power list out and I've actually talked about Rashid Khan a little bit on the power list. That, sorry, we haven't got it out. It'll be out in the morning, I should say. But I did think to myself that it was, um, that teams seem to want to attack Rashid Khan that little bit earlier, right? They're a little bit more keen to go early, try and put him under some pressure, which makes a lot of sense because for years, people weren't doing that. Shout out to Shane Watson and Chris Gale. It is, how many, this is a minimum 30 runs. It is incredible that there are only four players scoring at over 10 runs and over against um, Rashid Khan in the history of the IPL. Uh, I suppose not that many people have made any runs against him. Just have a look at the sunrises by phase um, today. Do you see anything that sticks out here? Um, Everyone will know how much this this it annoys the crap out of me, right? Uh, but yeah, certainly, you know, a, a bit of an issue there um, with how they've gone in that second phase. 
some of that is going to be wickets and, it, and and everything else. And they kept losing consistent wickets, but you're putting yourself at such a disadvantage. I also think that teams who do this, I, I don't know if there's a way for me to look this up, but I think teams who bat slowly in this period quite often lose extra wickets in here. So I'm not sure you pay off as much as you think you do. Like having a set player in here, if they've scored 12 off 12 in this period, it's, I don't know. It's not for me. It's not, <laughs> no, thank you. Mohit Sharma, death overs, runs per over. This is, it's an incredible change. And, and someone asked about slow balls the other day. And what I was saying is that once you get to a point where your slower ball is probably rotating more because that's the main thing that does it that ability to dip to bounce to maybe get even a little bit of turn really changes things and if you have a look at the amount of revolutions mohit Sharma's putting on his slower ball i still think the bowlers don't but i i think they should be spending a lot of more time with those humming bee cameras um you know and and humming bee humming bird cameras and having a look at better ways to put their fingers um, around the ball to get more revolutions on the ball you know what works more because you can see what happens when you get it right from two runs a ball comes back in 2023 and is going at four runs and over less and this year he's doing even better than that right and he had some years th these are um, probably around par years maybe slightly above par um, that one would have been well below par and that one obviously would have been like far but he wasn't a terrible bowler but it's quite clear i think in over 16 you're probably looking at about 9.7 runs and over so he's a run and over better last season um and this year he's probably running at around two runs and over better like absolutely fantastic um i cannot say enough good things about him but i have in the power list i think did i or did i skip him in the power list i can't remember now um uh, this is the sunrises bowlers today I talked about it a little bit in the opening. You know, Boovy and Cummins bowled really, really well, but they didn't get much out of, of the rest of their bowlers. You look at this lineup, I like Washington Sundar, but I think he has to be used with the new ball up front, and Shabazz took those overs. That's not ideal. Unadka, I feel sorry for him because he's obviously too good not to play in the IPL but not good enough with the white ball to work out how to make it work. And I do feel sorry for him because we all know how good he is with a red ball. Um, and Mark Andy um, got, got smoked there a little bit. But um, I think they'll be pretty happy with Boovy going at around a run of ball or not around seven runs and over and Cummins going at seven runs and over. Cummins has probably not lived up to his price tag because I'm not sure he can, but he's been absolutely fine. Way better than I thought he would be um, so far. He's done great. Boovy got smashed everywhere this hopefully this is a bit of a comeback this game and things are getting normal but he did go for over 50 in his first two games miller versus pace and spin today strike rate of 127 against pace and strike rate of 233 against spin I talked about it before but his ability to change how he has um scored against spinners is really not only has it saved his career but it's taken him to that level that we all thought he should have got at when he was young. Like, you know, he was thought of as a potential AB de Villiers type player. And we never quite saw that. But over the last couple of years, when he's got it together, we've seen him in one day cricket just be an absolute beast, right? Um, and he's been fantastic. And and so it's great to see him again um, doing so well. And a big part of that is that the man absolutely destroys um, spin at the moment. So I said, I should, we talked about him and uh, the way he, uh, he went, um, how well the game was set up for him. He's not going to get many better situations just to come in and, um, and do what he needs to do. So you can see there, strike rate of just under 120, or right on 120 against pace and 131 against spin. Anyone who's plus against spin is usually quite good, but you know, 131 is not massive, but you could probably get a career being consistently, you know, scoring around 130, 135 against spin. And Sai Sadashan is like, he's like a comfortable pair of slippers. He might be the most prototype anchor that's not an opener in the IPL. I think me and Sean are looking at doing a piece on anchors because I think the anchors' positions have changed and players do it differently now. You've got your floating anchor, 
oxymoron. You've got your opening anchor, you've got your spin playing anchor, which is probably what Sai is. You know, so, so there's a few different, I think there's a few different options. It'd be interesting to see how he fits in. And then you have Rudiman Saha's power play strike rate since the start of 2020. 170, and then last year, 134 and 133. He's essentially playing as a pinch hitter, right? And this year, he's up to 144. If he plays as a pinch hitter and averages 18 to 20, which is probably what he's going to average if he bats at number seven, um, outside of that incredible 100 he, play, he made at one time. But if he, can, if he can average 20 at a strike rate of 144, I think he's done the job correctly. What an incredibly soft dismissal today, did. <laughs> Looked like he drop-kicked it to mid-on. Um, but yes, I think... I think from that this perspective, it is. Um, I think this is a very good number, but we shouldn't be expecting. Well, if I was working for them, I would be saying, "Look, we just need you to average twenty. If you can give us twenty, and you can get twenty of twelve to thirteen to fourteen balls, which buys Shulman Gill five or six balls every game." I think that's a great start for them, uh, especially considering he has a very good secondary skill. Anyway, that's the games today. Uh, the next school board will be back on Wednesday. So I have a couple of days off there. Uh, but don't leave just yet because we'll be answering questions uh, from the chat. So if you're desperate to ask any questions, that is the best way of doing this. But we'll take a quick break so I can actually go through them and read them and do all those sorts of things. But I'm Jared Kimber. This is Scoreboard. Like, subscribe. Love me. Love me. Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two-year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber. If you make any content, Minbo Pro is the tool for you. Take your long format content and cut it and slice it for social media. This AI inspired weapon will turn your one piece of work into so many clips. Try Minbo.pro now. All right, welcome back. Got a couple of super chats, um, but there's a couple of other chats from the uh, uh, that I can get to as well. Please, uh, if you, I've got about four or five here, but if you're desperate to add anything else, um, super chat is the way to go. Lots of conversation, uh, but not a lot of direct questions in in uh, in the group today. Shri, oh, forgot how every freaking episode. <laughs> Shri Ram says commentators were talking about dip on that Pathrana's Yorker. Does he really get dip on the ball apart from the weird action and pace? What makes him a very effective Yorker bowler? Yeah, so and Malinga had the same thing. And so when you were playing Malinga, it was very hard to play him with a bat that wasn't completely and utterly straight. Whereas with most bowlers, you don't have to worry about that. And the reason is, is because when Pathrana is bowling, <laughs> I'm trying to keep the ball in frame here. When he's bowling, instead of coming this way behind the ball, he's coming this way under the ball. So he is bowling with incredible revolutions on the ball. Sort of, it's almost more like a. Um, uh, it, it it doesn't come out of the hand in the same way. So when he bowls on a length, it's not that noticeable apparently. Uh, and this, I'm basing this on Malinga, who has the same action. But when he when he bowled on a length, it wasn't as noticeable. But when they bowl very very full. And it's even more so when they bowl the slower ball, uh, the revolutions start to play up. And so the ball, when it's coming towards you, just seems to dip off at a different angle than everyone else. Uh, and it's, it's the revolutions that they get on the ball because of the way their hand undercuts it. So even when they're bowling at pace, the ball reacts a little bit differently than a normal player bowling at that pace. I'm not sure they're faster Yorkers do it. I would think it's more to do with their slower balls. But think about it this way. If he's bowling cutters at 135 Ks and you're having to deal with, and if you think of Malinga's best ball, pretty much for the se second two thirds, or the, you know, outside of the first third of his career, his best ball wasn't his on pace Yorker. It was generally his slower ball. And that was the ball that kind of, it looked like it was going to hit you in the knee. And then because of all the revolutions on it, it would drop. And, um, and then eventually it would, uh, you know, um, 
uh, get you out LBW if you didn't have a straight bat or just go through you and bowl you. And I think that's what Partharana actually does as well. But it's also that when you're talking about the Yorker specifically, it's because of the angle that he bowls. It, it's actually easier to play Partharana and Malinga sometimes when they hit a, hit a good length or they bang it in short of a length because the ball kind of sits up from the way that they're bowling it. It's almost like you're, imagine skidding a rock into the water. If you skid it into the water too close to you, it hits it and goes up straight away. That's what sometimes they could do. Now think about skidding a rock from a low, with a low throw where you actually skim it across the water and then it just lightly touches the water. That's a little bit more what their deliveries do. And so it's just very, very different um, and the way that it goes around. And um, is back saying Mohit Sharma is the Indian Nathan Ellis. I think well, Nathan Ellis is obviously you're taking the piss, but Nathan Ellis is probably a bowler whose best delivery isn't really his best on pace delivery isn't that special, right? Like there's almost is there a little bit of Andrew Ty about Nathan Ellis where if they didn't have incredible slow balls, they would make it. Whereas I think Mohit Sharma is probably a guy with a better, um, and I know that's not the point of this question, but hey, you, you pay your money, you get your answer. Um, Mohit Sharma, I'm just having a look. First class record is a bowling average of 25. So I think Mohit Sharma's the best ball is probably more towards that sort of international quality delivery. Um, and then, so what, who would Mohit Sharma be more like? Um, Hmm. There's a bit of right-handed Harry Gurney about him. Although Harry Gurney was more back of the hands, lower balls, wasn't he? I'm trying to think of another player um, that's a little bit more like him. He's yeah. I don't know if there's a great comp for him out there. He's probably like Harshal Patel with a slightly better normal delivery. If we're being honest, that's probably the best comp for him. And because he's a bit better and a little bit more rounded as a bowler um he's more useful you you know you can trust him a little bit more on the death than harshall that's a long answer for a joke question but he, that's that's what we do here box box says out of cool deep chakravarti and bishnoi who would you want in your t2011 is this a joke because i kind of feel like everyone would pick cool deep wouldn't they am i missing something um i mean i really like ravi bishnoi I suppose him and Cool Deep spin the ball the same way. Would that, would that be? That's probably fair, isn't it? Last year, uh, Cool Deep went at 7.37 with an average of 36. Obviously, he didn't play today. I'm expecting him this year to take a whole bunch of wickets and average around, um, at an average around 20, 24 ish, you know, uh, I'm willing to take a couple on either side without being too happy or sad. Uh, cool Deep, uh, sorry, Bishnoi last year took 16 wickets at 24, 7.74. So, yeah, I still think I take Cool Deep. I think I trust him a little bit more. Um, but I think Bishnoi is a really good bowler. But Chakravarti is, um, I don't think he really. Uh, perfectly blends in with the Indian team. If that's if this is a question about the Indian eleven, and I really like Chakravarti, but I don't think he's bowling as well as he used to. I've just I've just put him down as a negative um, for uh, Kolkata at the moment. Um, those other two are probably not negatives. I think Bishnoi has to take an absolute shit ton of wickets for his team. Uh, Kuldeep might have to as well, although he didn't play, so might not get back on the side. Uh, Rahul says. It's hard to be a power hitter and a technically good test batter at the same time. There must be something about this technique that doesn't allow him to be as explosive. Oh, I'm not sure who we are talking about there. Sorry, Roll. I saw the first part. It is, but it depends on the on the player. Um, Aiden Markram has a perfectly sound technique and he can hit the ball as hard as anyone. Um, I'm trying to think of some other guys. Chris Gale, weirdly enough, was a fantastic test player. A couple of test hundreds and massively underrated as a test player. Uh, so, yeah, th there is that. You can change your technique from from format to format as well. I think it would be very hard to be an Andre Russell type batter and a test batter. But Andre Russell probably would have only averaged 25 to 30 in test cricket. But 
you know, it would have been the impact of some of those 70 odds that he would have got a 40 balls that would have been the issue uh, for, for the opposition. Um, but yes, so I no, I do think you can be a technically good test batter and a power hitter. You know, Matthew Hayden would be a perfect example of this. For instance, Sewag would be another um, example of this. But the, the, the difference is that there is a stretch going on. So over the next five to 10 years, it should happen less, right? Just because people are going to specialize in one form, which might not allow them to go between the two. And it's very hard. We're already seeing it's very hard for Virat Coley and Kane Williamson and Joe Root and the, you know, Steve Smith to keep up in T20 cricket when they're playing all three formats and they're really good in the other formats. How much is Sahih Sudarshan's style modeled on Kane Williamson? Um, I, it's not something that I have noticed. Uh, certainly not something that, you know, sticks in my mind as something worthy of mention. Um, I'm trying to think if who saw there. I was thinking if, you, if you're talking about style, I see there's role in this style. I must think his role is more similar to Kane Williamson's and his style. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, it's an interesting question, but it doesn't instantly spring to my head as something uh, worthy, uh, uh, the, something from my head. But if you've picked it up, then you've picked it up. Uh, let's take another quick break. And if there's any further questions, uh, we'll finish with them then. I'm Jared Kimber. This is a scoreboard. Bloody hell. Just like subscribe already. Support us on Patreon and help us keep making our content. Join for exclusive perks like the AMAs, the live calls, and to chat with me directly on Discord. You can also enjoy ad-free content, early podcasts, and access to my emailer. Step up your cricket-style game with Bodyline t-shirts. Explore their exclusive player-themed t-shirts, including favorites like Virat Kohli, Kane Williamson, and Ben Stokes. They also have team-inspired designs and options for hardcore cricket nerds. Their collection offers something unique for every fan. All right, welcome back. We've only got a couple more questions, but some interesting ones here. Well, comment from Arco. He says, Michael Vaughan was yapping like Patharana invented the dip. Yeah, it's, no, it's definitely, we saw it with Malinga. In fact, if you go back to some of the old articles I wrote about it, it was very, very tough. And when you talk to batters, that's what they were talking about was, it, it's so, the, one of the first plays I saw smash Lassif Malinga was Cameron White. And if you remember Cameron White, Technically, he could be a little bit all over the place as a batter sometimes. But the one thing that he was very good at is having a high front elbow. And that's sort of a Cameron Green, the yeah, early model of Cameron Green, just not as good a batter. The Camerons, that's what everyone refers to him as. But if you look at Cameron Wright, he smashed Malinger in one game. And he did it by just keeping a dead straight bat and getting his head over the ball, waiting for the ball to be in his area and then hitting through. So much so that Sri Lanka had a fielder right behind Malinga's head. Um, not out in the boundary, even inside the circle, because Cameron White was going straight back over his head over and over again. And that was about the time that teams started doing that a little bit more. But Cameron White, that was quite natural. Other players couldn't follow him the same way. I think Pollard might have been another player who might have tried that in another league where he went up against Malinga. I remember seeing, or maybe it was the West Indies, I can't remember. Um, and and a lot of it was about that. So the minute you have that cross bat, so if you think about that sort of, that shot that let's say someone like Josh Butler plays where he gives himself a little bit of room um, and he sort of tries to, I don't know, what would you call it, almost like a hockey slap of it, of the ball, that almost always has an angled bat. That is the problem with Malinga, right? It's it's the ball just dipping and getting under that. Andre Russell, again, the power hitter, you know, getting himself away from the ball means that he can't have a straight bat. That's the thing with Patharana is that he could even have more success than Malinga right? Um, and the reason he could have more success than Malinga um, is that so many players now have that sort of power stance and back away a little bit more. Um, so things are different, but I don't know what Michael Vaughan was talking about. No, it certainly happened before. Uh, Arol was talking about Jadeja before, so that was, I can't find a question about the test um, thing, but we have seen Jadeja hit, right? I mean, it's, it's possible for everyone to be able to do it. Some of it is about the amount of hours that you have and, you know, all these different things. But we have seen Jadeja hit for power. What, what did he hit? About a million runs off a, a Harshal Patel over at one stage. Um, you know, so we, we're not worried about his, his ability to do that. I don't think today, I mean, he went in ahead of Dhoni. So they sent him up there to hit. It just didn't work. And there have been years when, I, I remember there was a good chunk where he was the best 
I think he had a fantastic record at the death over a couple of years uh, with his strike rate. And so in 2020, he had a strike rate of 175. And, then, and he's had, what, three or four years over 140? At the death, you can't do that unless you got power. So it's different. Um, but yeah, it's certainly something that you can uh, still do. Uh, culture says, can we have some more content that situates cricket within the broader culture and society, like some of the older Red Inca podcasts? Um, well, we, we just did one with the first, um, uh, uh, you know, trans player, um, Danielle McGahn, um, <laughs> that, that came out recently. Uh, what else have we got on Red Inca? Um, no, we've had heaps of them come out. I would have thought of recent times. Those kind of ones. Uh, we just did one about a woman who worked, uh, has been traveling as a diplomat's wife who's traveled around trying to get associate cricket to work in places like, is it Peru? Uh, certainly Cambodia um, is one of the places that she was working in. Um, yes, we do that all the time. Just pay attention, man. There, there's plenty of it. We, you know, we did something on the Afghanistan women's team re recently. So again, looking at cricket and culture, there's plenty of stuff on cricket and culture. Um, it's not really, uh, I mean, outside of the Red Inca podcasts, no, even the footmarks, we've done plenty of that sort of stuff. There's any heaps of it. You gotta go find it. Problem is I make too much content. Uh, a couple more quick ones and then we'll head out. Uh, uh, Iceman says, curious on your take about ODIs. Should they be trialed with a pink ball instead? Has the ICC been in discussion to trial it with those balls? I like the pink ball more than the white ball. I don't really understand why it hasn't been used. You can make an argument that it should be used in T20 cricket as well. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think from that point of view, I'm more than happy if they do that, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that um, anytime soon. Uh, well, I should say, it doesn't feel like there's a movement towards it. And Abdullah, last question today, I think. Yeah, why not? Abdullah says, who are the best batters to play against the Yorker? Uh, you know, so Lance Clusen is probably the first guy he kind of works out how to score against them. I thought Michael Bevan was a brilliant player of Yorkers as well. Both of them. So you, uh, Bevan's real thing was either get inside the line and flick it to fine leg or give yourself a little bit of room and hit it to backward point. And those, uh, you know, two open spots at the end of ODI games. Kluzner comes along, and I don't know if he copied Bevan or not, but he sort of went further on that. So he then weapon, because he was so powerful compared to Bevan, he could hit it from backward point to sort of extra cover, even mid off. And then if um, he also could just flick them across the line. And then if you missed your Yorker, of course, with him, it absolutely disappeared. Then you have the sort of Dilshan and, and Butler and all the different, and ABWs, all the guys with the scoops who, who were very good against them. And Doni is probably the other one. The helicopter shot is the other big sort of movement in, in Yorker play, right? Of going from, you know, that ability. So, so the thing with the Yorker is, and this is what, if your uncle or your auntie or your neighbor is sitting there going, oh, they should bowl more Yorkers. Think about this. A Yorker literally means that the ball is going up against the ground and the bat at the same time. If you miss your Yorker by two feet and it lands here, a helicopter shot can probably get under that. If you miss it by two feet the other way, it's a low full toss. And most players these days will even reach out and take the full toss further. Most balls that are length, most balls that are full tosses are Yorkers, right? They just haven't been successfully bowled. And in the old days, batters would stay very still on their crease. Now, players go all the way back and all the way forward, which means that this idea of getting the ball to jam right in here is almost impo impossible. So I'd say all, odd, all modern players are better against Yorkers. So Joel Garner, if he bowled today, it would be fascinating to see what Joel Garner would do. But you go back and you have a look at some of that footage, and a lot of what Joel Garner did at the death was just Yorker, 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 Yorker. And Glenn McGrath was slightly different because I think by his period, he needed to mix it up with more slower balls, which obviously wasn't a thing when Garner was dominating. But these days, you cannot just bowl Yorkers all the time. So all batters are better against the Yorker. The path of Rana, Tushara, Malinga, Yorker is special because there are only three top-level bowlers really, at, you know, uh, there's about four or five of them, but there's about, you know, three or four guys who can do that ball at pace in the world at any one time. It's coming out of a strange place. So, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, th there's um, a great, 
kind of experiment, but not an experiment of when they got um, a softball pitcher to go to um, Major League Baseball and go up against all the All-Stars and none of the men could hit her. And the reason is that she was pitching from an area where they don't look. All of their muscle memory and all of their, you know, brain elasticity is expected to look for the ball up here, here, maybe a little bit lower. And she's coming from underarm and with a completely different kind of action, even to the baseball pitches you throw low. When you change a small thing like that, it can be very, very hard. Uh, Saeed Amwar couldn't face Murali at one stage in his career because he didn't know where to look. Because bowlers generally bowl with their wrist facing you, or if you're a leg spinner, with it facing you and then turning. And Murali was coming over the top. And Saeed Amwar couldn't work, couldn't work out where to look. Like all these little things matter. So Patharana coming from so low, that is not a place that international batters have ever had to look until they faced him. Unless they faced Malinga before or Tushara or, you know, randomly another bowler out there. That's why all these different things really, really matter, right? And, and that's why having that advantage, he still has to bowl well. He still has to be fast. He still has to be accurate. You know, he's probably, I, I don't know if he has the highest percentage of five wides in the world. Based on when I've watched him, I'd say he'd be up there, right? So it is very, very different um, from that kind of uh, uh, point of view of of how you are playing someone like that. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much for your questions. As I said, I'll be back on Wednesday, but tomorrow we will have uh, uncovered. Uh, we'll have overthrows. Uh, footmarks will be on what, Wednesday or Thursday, whenever that comes out. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else we have this week. There's a couple of other things. There'll be another scoreboard on Wednesday. But on the main channel tomorrow, the best way to go is to the power list. So that will be out, I don't know, whenever the boys put it together. I, I've actually done all the content, but I haven't actually given them the power list yet. So they're probably watching this going, maybe you could come off and give us the actual order of how you want these teams to go. Uh, but there's plenty more stuff to come. We did a really cool video on the main site a couple of days ago, which was looking at the entire history of all the win percentages. So you can see that when teams had a good run or a bad run, uh, you can see that when we had a substitute teacher team and when the teams got suspended and all that sort of stuff and it's a really really interesting graphic but also helps you tell the history of the ipl uh really quickly as well uh but that's it for me here today i will see you again tomorrow if you're around for that live uh but a big shout out to everyone thanks to Vern for joining us and and helping out uh with the stats and all the rest of the team and everyone else but we'll be back again tomorrow i'm jared kimber this is the scoreboard i'm always with you NordVPN know nothing about knuckleballs, but they can help you with online safety. If you need a VPN, use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba to get a huge discount and four months for free. They also have a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is risk-free. The link is in the show notes. So stop thinking about knuckleballs for two minutes and go to nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba and get your deal. A few years ago, I tried to work out what my process was for actually making content on sport. And along the way, I realized that I had basically created an online course. So here it is, Fans with Laptops, a course you can do in your own time. And it looks at writing, podcasting, and making videos, not to mention social media and so many other parts of the industry. I will teach you about what to do inside the press box or writing a huge feature. But the important thing is that it takes your passion and lets you make something out of it. So if this sounds good to you, try Fans with Laptops.